Welcome to a series of Plat Chat videos where we are going to tackle every single team in the Overwatch League for 2020 and run you through kind of our fears and also predictions for them. I'm Sideshow, joined by Custer and Reinforce. We've got a special edition of Plat Chat. Uh, no Brent, no Mr. X, because they don't know any of the players. <laughs> so well, that, that's the Plat Chat of the group. So really, we've just brought the smart people together. It's and not yeah. really Plat Chat anymore. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not Plat Chat. It's GM Chat. And I am <laughs> also a GM uh, by proxy. We're both washed up. Let's say mass. Masters. Yeah, we'll go Masters. Yeah. Masters. <laughs> Compromise. I've seen, I've seen your Doomfist account in Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is no Doomfist account that exists in Diamond. Uh, okay. Yes. Wait, right. wait, wait, wait. So I need to get this clear. Have you actually been top 500 on all three roles? In the game? No, because I haven't played Because Bren told roles. me that once, and I got so tilted thinking that I was worse than you on DPS and support. Oh, no, DPS, DPS is yeah. really easy. I struggle on tank because I find it really hard. I, I got like 4,200 tank. So I think we should set up a competition where we battle for who can get top 500 on all three <laughs> roles. Three. I'm down to do it. I'm yeah. out. I'm anyway. Really, but I'm really struggling on tank these days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first one that we're going to start with is the Boston Uprising. Now, we're going to talk through the Boston Uprising a little bit, and you'll see the board behind us. As we go through the teams and Custer gets out of the way, Sorry. we're, we're going to uh, add them up on the board there, uh, about roughly where we think. It'll probably change, though, because... Oh. Absolutely. We get to yeah. the end of this episode on Boston, we're going to put them somewhere, and then as we add in all the other teams, we know we're where to we're going people. to put them. <laughs> we know where they're going to be put. 20th. All right, so let's, right start, let's start with uh, the Boston no, Uprising. We're getting to Valiant. Oh, come to, on. Uh, getting, <laughs> let's start with Boston then. So we know that Boston did incredibly well in season one, yeah. and they always have this idea of being able to pick up new talent and just turn them into an incredible team. How did that work for them in 2019? Not, Not well at all. Great. Questionable. So, so yeah. do you think that that means that their entire system is screwed? Well, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Krusty for uh, their season so one performance well, yeah. and developing those players to begin with. So I think there is a fundamental problem with the coaching staff. I don't know how much you want to trust in Mineral in developing these contenders' talent. I mean, Mineral has a lot of experience, but... Yeah. It comes around to what they want to accomplish with the roster. Do they want to develop and sell players or have a good performance? Like, I don't know what their goals are. Yeah. I, do you think that it's actually kind of more important that the Boston Uprising has good coaches than good players? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how I yeah. feel about it. I, I think their players, are, their players are fine. Like, if you look at their roster that they had last year, they should have finished probably higher than where they were. Um, I think you can tell the coaching failed when they just didn't ever pick up goats. Like, yeah. did, were they ever good at goats throughout the entire season? I don't think so. And yeah. I think a lot of what happened in goats was a result of the coaches i think the best teams had the best coaches and they really you know sort of put everyone to thing all right well let's take a look at the coaching staff that they've got uh, at the moment so they've got robert Kraft. wow <laughs> <laughs> i think he's a gm player right <laughs> yeah 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 and then a, a bunch of other people so they've got uh ilka askoff i think these were brand new pickups that they just hired they've yeah. still got mini on the board and I, I i honestly i don't even know whether these people i'm pretty sure i've asked that mr bleepless a meme <laughs> oh, really? so, I, mean, uh, I don't know i don't but know maybe i'm throwing shade i believe I askoft and ilka came from uh, some of the other contenders teams HSL, as well yeah. yeah he he played for hsl and went over to the boston uprising who knows and then ilka i know because he's greek interestingly and there are like almost no greek yeah. people in overwatch as far as i'm aware so that was an interesting one he's also he's coached a bunch of different uh, eu teams most recently the angry titans and the angry titans I, I famously i can't exactly remember who said this but someone was talking to me about the coaches i think it was packing 10 actually which is really interesting because he used to coach angry titans yes, yes, uh, yes and this guy i can't remember who it was it might have been a vast but i don't really want to credit him with this because it's, <laughs> it's too genius he was like mate if you can make angry titans into a decent team looking at their players then my god you are a good coach <laughs> so he was like yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. that Swedish roster was pretty stacked mate. <laughs> like, don't, 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 don't talk trash like now now these days you know it's a bit worse but you know come on they I, had wait, wait, can you go back to uh the Greek coach he coached um Atlanta Academy is that what I saw down there um, was he there during the actual good times or I don't know times? let's have a look June. so that is the beginning of 2019 so kind of from March March that to was June. during the uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, Custer doesn't know his months of the year. Yeah, that's Atlantic Showdown. He was part of that, right? Uh, let's have a look. So that's like 2019, early on. Uh, uh, so no, he left and then they started no. doing well. I mean, they had already come second in Contender Season 3 yeah, before that. So, so he's doing okay. Yeah, yeah so I mean, he, he has some reps in like... But the thing is, when you have a team that's actually as individually talented as Atlanta Academy, yeah. I never know like how to rate the coaching staff. Well, that's yeah. I mean, one they, of those teams well, that When they run by enough. legit RC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. So moving on. All right, moving on. So 
how, let's take a look at the actual players then for the Boston Uprising that they've got on their roster this year. I I think this is one of the weakest teams that we've got. Okay. They, they've got some high points like Myon Bong, which Myon Bong? Huck managed to steal yeah. under everybody's nose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that story? People keep saying it yeah. was like a weird story. So yeah, but... to basically give you a summary of it, uh, other people were reaching out to Myon Bong to trial and Huck just reached out and gave him an offer instantly. And because Myon Bong thought that he wasn't going to get offers from other places. He just took them. Uh, because the, I think the other teams had reached out to his agent to trial him and hadn't directly talked to Moonbong. And Huck just went straight to the dude and was like, here's an offer. <laughs> How do you that's like such, it? That's such a Huck thing to it do. It really like, is. Yeah. Behind in the shady alley, like, yo, just take the 50000 and move <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But I think the offer was still relatively good. I think it got reported oh, yeah, on. I'm I sure can't exactly offer, remember. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. the weirdest player on this team, honestly, is Munchkin. Yeah, it is. I, yeah, well, because well, I started playing against Munchkin like Apex Season Two. I don't know, were you there? Ah, the... uh, yeah, yeah, I was Season Two as well. Yeah, what team did you play on? And he played on. Uh, oh, oh my god! I can't it wasn't remember. one of the big ones. No, it was not even in the uh, Apex. Yeah. It was like the the Challenger kind of yeah, thing. I yeah, I can't remember. I can't even remember, remember what because there were two like sister teams, and he was like on the worst of them. Yeah. But we used to play versus him in scrims, and he just pop off on Widowmaker and just destroy us. Yeah. Like uh, like Ilios, he just pick Widowmaker and just destroy us, and we were like, oh my god, what a player! And then season one comes around. And I'm pretty sure he didn't see a ton of playtime ahead of I don't Fleta. Think he, he, and he, he was just like all right in the game. Yeah, it was all well. right. I, I think he's more of a McCree Widowmaker player than a Trace. But when you have Fleta, like, when are you ever going to play Munchkin, right? Like, that becomes a question. Yeah. yeah, it's special. yeah. He, he did play Tracer quite a bit, but it, yeah. he, he wasn't spectacular. He was just then, all right. And then last season, he just got his shit pushed in. Yeah, and he's like, not. Brigitte and shit. And he's yeah. like, I don't know what to do with this character. Yeah. So yeah. he's a bit of a, you know big aim no brain <laughs> yeah. yeah but also what's he doing on this team yeah because this team is yeah. like boston never picks kind of washed up players you yeah. know what i mean and munchkin almost uh, almost on, exactly how old fits is he that. well you can be washed up at any age i'm gonna guess 22 custer's really young <laughs> <Come 21. on. laughs> that's actually not true on either front no, that's to true. be fair he plays lucio you know yeah, that's true yeah. he's 21 so yeah. i mean the guy's still young but boston is a weird place to revitalize your career uh, yeah and especially seeing as they usually just pick up young talent and try and like develop it in that way like they more like you you see move you see swimmer those are the players yeah. that i would like more on their brand and like bruce as well um so i, I just go on i just don't understand how this team has like any synergy it's a mix mosh of i think just everything yeah and i don't what's their starting six are they gonna play color hex or are they gonna play jerry and munchkin like I mean, what's jerry's hero pool yeah uh, uh, jerry's hero pool i believe he's hit scan but also god knows because you look at him and if anybody has been following <laughs> this guy while he was playing for meta athena then i would say you've been following the wrong teams or you just have way too much time <laughs> meta athena didn't do particularly well most recently like this was when they were playing in trials okay they come second so you might have like a tiny bit of an eye on them but then they just kind of sucked oh my god what trivia dude career. His huh? name comes from the cartoon Tom and Jerry. He took it because he watched that since he was a kid. Yeah, that's wow. from an interview that they had with the Boston wow. Uprising. Somebody just added it in here, I yeah. guess. But that, that's the thing. I mean, you look at this team and, okay, so the DPS has question marks because we don't really know how good Jerry is. But that could be, you know, one of these like striker-esque kind of pickups. Yeah. DPS, I feel like it's Striker-esque. Easier. It was literally a top-tier tracer in yeah. season one. But nobody knew him coming into the league. Sure. He was on a really poor team. He was on like Rox Orcus playing with Gregory, and, and nobody nobody knew him yeah. so that that's like the kind of pickup that if you have a really good scout i think it's much easier to pick up very good dps players than it is to pick up very good tank yeah. players what do you think about the when we talk about the boston uprising you think of like all the players they picked up in the past they're very different players as you said players that people aren't really scouting but if you look at the last four pickups that they have move and swim and munch compression they were all people that were very much in the limelight oh. i think that's very interesting actually yeah especially brusson because yeah. I, I don't like to think that GMs are bad enough that they just follow World Cup hype, but I think it could be true. I, I think well, it was definitely on I was course. actually going to say this about Munchkin, and I think there's a chance that Hawk is a very big brain GM in that he's going to pick up players that have the opportunity to look good so he can get more value from them later on. So I think Munchkin is the perfect player in this regard because he can look really bad when he plays the wrong heroes. But when he plays the good heroes, when he gets yeah. subbed in and he's like, okay, all you have to do is play Widowmaker and he pops off, he can be almost like a pine kind of player. And maybe well some other team will take the bait, <laughs> will take the bait and just like, okay, we want Munchkin because they don't know what they're doing. 
So maybe Mon or Hawk is just like trying to buy into the hype and then sell the hype for even more money. I'm I'm th I'm saying there's a chance that could explain maybe like the Brosnan pickup. I would say what it. you've got here essentially is like say Boston and Price are a farm team, right? So they're trying to like. They're trying to pump their cattle full of hormones and they're trying to sell the cattle. greatest beef that they can. Cattle. And they're trying to sell them on for a higher price. But he's uh, currently trying to sell some very old, decrepit cows. Uh, decrepit? <laughs> to, what the hell, dude? He's selling old, decrepit cows to a bunch of people that have prime cattle. Like, the, the other teams in the league have so much good talent already that I cannot imagine them getting to the end of 2020 and being like, holy shit, we got to pick up Jerry. That guy <laughs> popped. Like, maybe, but it seems quite unlikely. I think you're being naive. I think teams that are like 17th to 12th and or like, well, we couldn't need a monster here. Yeah, yeah. If they're teams, desperate. Teams that have a hole in their roster where they can't afford a superstar, but they want someone who's better than what they have. And like, I agree with uh, Johnny on the fact that like a Munchkin could be that. If he has a good season, let's say he has a good first half of the season, and one of those 12 to 17 teams have like a really poor hit scan player that's just not performing. Yeah. In this kind of meta, you might need a Munchkin. But that team. all relies on them actually having reasonable performances throughout the year. Yeah, it's a gamble, And, for and sure. I think that my point about old decrepit cows <laughs> is that these guys might not even be able to show up in their games. Like, you have to be able to be competent against half of the teams in the league to have occasional star performances. Yeah. And, and if you can't be competent with 10 teams in the league, I don't think this roster can be competent with 10 teams in the league. So, I mean, I do want to give some credit to Myon Bong and maybe Fusions and maybe Color Hex. I mean, I don't think, like... As soon as you get past Myon Bong, you're stretching, bro. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, the there's some... are okay, but as he said, uh... those three players aren't enough to carry over like to be I, competitive I with the top 10 teams yeah yeah i think no, you I think also right. you look at a guy like fusions and honestly even though he's a great leadership figure and i think that he's a pretty good tank when you actually stack up all the main tank players in the league he's still somewhere towards the bottom yeah like i wouldn't say that he's an average main tank in the overwatch league because the level of play has just gone up a yeah, lot i mean his reinhardt was really good and I mean, we don't know what the tank storylines are going to look like if we play Orisa next season. Well, yeah, that's like true. how do you hype up or like separate main tanks? Like it's just uh, yeah, going it's to be uh, yeah, incredible characteristics, personality. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. I, so, I think it's interesting though. They've got some, they've got some interesting players. They've got players that can speak in front of camera. They've got occasional star talent. I think they're still going to be somewhere towards the bottom though. Yeah, and I'm, I can't see them going over seventeenth. Like, honestly, like, if I was putting them in a spot, I can't see the... I would put them 17, 18. Should we, should we try yeah, and add them to the board? Well, well, well let, let me ask this. Are oh. they going to get more than eight wins? So they had eight wins last they year. They had eight wins, 20 losses. Do you think they'll get season. more than eight wins with this roster? Um, let me think. Wait. So the, what you have to think is, which teams are they going to win against? And they're going to play more they're against... They're also in the Atlantic their, division yeah, well. Atlantic, So they're yeah. in the Atlantic division. So they, they could win at more than eight. If you Outlaws, lose, Toronto... Paris. Paris, Washington. I mean, Washington I would say they're worse than all of those teams, but can they win against them uh, occasionally? Yeah. Like, maybe. I mean, they need eight. I would say, though, they are the worst team in the Atlantic Conference. And if that's in the Atlantic Conference, if you wait, just wait until we scroll down to the Pacific Conference and see the teams in that, that thing. Yeah, I mean... Look at that, the only two struggling teams really are probably Valiant and... Maybe Chengdu? Maybe Chengdu. Dallas, sorry. We, we looked over Dallas. There. That's true, yeah. I mean, I have some <laughs> weird opinions on Dallas as well, but oh, really? we'll get yeah. to them later on when we do that. All right, all right so uh, over under, Josh. Over eight, uh, over under eight. Wins. All right. Okay, eight wins was when they only got one win in the whole of the second half of the season. So as long as you don't just like totally shit the bed like that, they should still get more. Okay, Custer, Custer. Eight wins is two per stage. Not that there are stages, but two per quarter of the year. I think I think it's ever so slightly over. I think they get nine. Because I want to put them on 20th because, you know, my boy's Valiant. Um, oh, that's not... <laughs> that is a good reason because I, no. think, no, but I think they're worse than Valiant. And if we look at their, the, every other team and we go, they're also worse than that, then they're probably going to come last. I think I'm actually going to put them yeah. 20th. Yeah, do you know so what? That I, makes, I think they're going to get five wins. I'm, yeah, I'm, actually, I'm going under as well. Yeah, I think I might go under uh, too. So I think they get less than eight. Do you guys want to put them 20th? Uh... Yeah, yeah, for now. <laughs> for now, they're gonna be there all year, bro. Well, yeah, they might be. All right, yeah, you can put them twentieth. I mean, we we haven't uh, we haven't come across the LA Valiant yet, but I know Custer has strong opinions against them. Oh my so. god, spice! I mean, we, you can't be biased on the desk anymore, though, well, Custer. I, that's the thing. I'm 
I'm not biased. Even when <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I, I'm a little biased. Okay? You're very biased. I mean, I shield Nevix for like a year, so I think you're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we've put Boston Uprising in the 20. Now, let's try and give the Boston fans something to look forward to. Let's not make this totally negative. Okay, yeah. If you have to sell the Boston Uprising right now, Custer, how do they actually win in 2020? Not win. Good Lord, they're not going to win. But if they're going to do all right, if they're going to get above eight wins next year, how do they do it? They actually have a lot of players that could be... We don't know about Jerry. Maybe Jerry was the star power of Meta Athena. True. Muth and Swimmer both have a lot of hype coming into the thing. If they actually do step up with Myeongbong and he, they synergize and they come together, they could definitely have some high highs and they could definitely get some wins over these other teams. Like they could be better than Houston. They could be better than Paris. They could be better than Valiant like easily and they could get plenty of wins. So I'm going to say this, okay? Every year towards the start of the playoffs, we see a big meta coming. <laughs> we see a shift in all the teams. You're so really going to pitch me the hope and pray for a the, meta. Towards the end of the season, we could see a meta shift. That makes them go from 20th to 19th. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it will Come help on, them out and dude. they'll get more than eight wins. Okay, wow, oh, that wow. is that rough. Was grim. Rough. <laughs> I do want to end by saying I do genuinely think Myeongbong is a fantastic player. Oh, yeah. And, and I bet he's regretting to see, <laughs> like, he could have joined a very good team. As he could well. have. <laughs> he could have. I, I will also say as well, normally every year there's a few teams that just shit the bed. And so it's more likely that one of those teams ends up being in 20th, I would say. Yeah. Like, as long as the Boston Uprising can avoid not totally shitting the bed. Yeah. But also, they are the team that has had the most consistent issues within their team every single year. In terms Maybe of, like, they're the Chengdu of last year. They could be. <laughs> <laughs> they could be. Right, well, I'm sorry that we gave you absolutely no hope, Boston Uprising fans, but we'll catch you in the next video where we go Good through luck. another team. <laughs>